Just last week, the nation was plunged into great shock over the alleged suicide of 18-year-old Tatenda Kapuya of St. Faith High School in Manikaland. The reason of the alleged suicide? Bullying. It is said the late student left a note with an imagery depicting what he went through when he was alive and the names of the alleged bullies. A sad scenario indeed, and this is just one of the very many cases of bullying that are happening in our schools. And it's very sad that this one came to us a little too late. Are our schools still safe spaces for children where they can go, thrive, and be protected? What are we doing to stop bullying in schools? Well, to help us answer um, these questions and more, we joined today on Inside Out by Ms. Kuzanae Nyanungo, who is the Chief Director of Lena Welfare, Psychological Services and Special Needs Education in the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education. Ms. Nyanungo is also a registered psychologist. Ma'am, good morning and um, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Yvonne. How are you doing? I could be better, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> all right. Um, we're talking about an issue that is really sensitive to, to all of us, the issue of bullying, the issue of um, children's protection in schools. So to start off, we just want to understand from you what bullying is. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Bullying is an undesirable phenomenon in which somebody is meant to be is made to be to feel afraid mm -hmm. and safe mm -hmm. and vulnerable mm -hmm. it can take the form of physical bullying mm -hmm. it can be emotional bullying it can take it's now it's even going to take it has taken the dimension of bullying in cyberspace, in the, on the internet, mm -hmm. and where people can even do it without knowing who they're bullying. Mm -hmm. It's something that is undesirable and illegal. And illegal. Now that you've mentioned all that, it, it got me thinking. Every time we talk about bullying, we think about peer-to-peer, students-to-students bullying each other. Is it possible that teachers may be part of this bullying circle? Um, when there is a power differential, like an adult to a child, mm -hmm. there are different terms that we would use. Okay. Because there's issues of victimization, mm -hmm. harassment, um, assault. Mm -hmm. So there are legal terms for that. Okay. So bullying is wherever one feels they don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. to speak out for themselves. They don't feel safe, um, and it's something they would r want to avoid if they can. Mm. That's when we start talking about bullying. So it can be peer-to-peer, -peer because when there's a power differential, there are other ways of defining what's happening. Uh, okay. Now let's, let's look at um, the, the recent case, maybe one that has necessitated this discussion that we're having today, the issue of um, a St. Faith Mission student who allegedly committed suicide due to bullying. It is said that he, he left an, an, a note with an imagery depicting what he went through and he was still alive and, and the people um, who were bullying him. How prevalent then is bullying in schools and how do we tackle such, such cases that come to us a little too late where the victim can no longer be helped? Um, I would like to take advantage of your platform. Okay to once again convey the deepest condolences from our ministry mm. and with your permission to just share with the, uh, with the nation that we actually have a team of psychologists that we've dispatched okay. to assist with the trauma and uh, also the investigations to just um, understand more Mm -hmm. So I would not really delve into that case for now and just to for the nation to bear with the parents, the siblings, mm -hmm. and all the relatives of this Kapuya child mm -hmm. at this very sensitive time. But to answer your question, 
The African Union actually recognized bullying as one of those issues that would affect the achievement of the continental education strategy for Africa. Mm. And as Zimbabwe, we undertook our own survey to establish what's really happening in our schools. We are yet to repeat the survey because things change all the time. In our survey, we did find that, yes, indeed, when it is well defined and children know what you're referring to, they will tell you it's happening. Okay. Bullying happens even among the youngest children at early childhood development. ECD. Yes, it does happen. Okay. We also found, so our research was to establish what is happening, what mm -hmm. forms of behaviors uh, that are described as bullying are happening among our own pupils in our own schools, mm -hmm. where is it happening? When does it happen in terms of time of day? Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances is bullying actually happening? What normally happens before the bullying behaviors and what action is being taken about uh, around it? And what practical measures some schools have taken to ensure that pupils are safe from bullying? Mm -hmm. We then found out that bullying incidences happen on the way to school, away from school. Some things happen in known places. It's usually something that uh, children know and keep secret because there's a culture of silence mm -hmm. where the bullies make those that they bully f believe that it will get worse if you snitch. That's mm -hmm. the word that they Snitching, use. Snitching, yes. <laughs> um, so sometimes parents don't even know what's happening to their children. I will give some examples later if you want. Mm -hmm. It happens in the absence of adult supervision. Mm. However, it also has been reported to happen when the supervisors turn a blind eye. They know, but they're not acting on it. But why do they do that? Because when, when we take our children to school, we, we're entrusting school authorities and whoever is in charge to take care of our children. So now if we have supervisors turning a, a blind eye to something that is so huge and can result in dire consequences, then we have a problem. I think the answer lies with those that turn a blind eye. But there is an attitude mm -hmm. where some believe it's normal. Mm. Um, some may feel they're too busy. I won't really go into that because people, d different people have different motives. Mm. Some people feel it's too much work. I'm not sure what's really happening. But certainly most of the cases happen when children are on their own. Mm. Um, that's why the culture of bullying sometimes gets so deep into a school's culture mm. that it's now intergenerational. It's happened for so many times that they don't even know it is that ugly. We also found out that in schools, there are certain blind spots mm -hmm. where children are more vulnerable than otherwise. Worldwide, the concern now is bullying has taken a certain level, escalated to a point where weapons can be found among children at school. Mm. In some countries now, they even have security personnel within school campuses just to ensure the safety of children. Mm. So the, this uh, refers to 
physical bullying and physical harm, but there's also the emotional bullying, calling people terrible names, hey, mm -hmm. you're ugly, you're too short, you're too fat. Mm -hmm. That is very harmful, not tangible, mm -hmm. because maybe one is whispering yeah. or sending messages and tearing them up, mm -hmm. or while the teacher's back is turned, <laughs> the ha terrible things are happening. Mm -hmm. So we also take cognizance of emotional, psychological bullying, mm -hmm. It is just as harmful, mm. sometimes and more harmful. listening to you speak now, all that um, tends to be abuse. So many times in society when you talk about abuse, we, we look at it as something that is you know, perpetuated maybe by, by older people, by adults, or s when, when there's a power difference. But we're talking about peers in school who are abusing each other emotionally, physically, mentally. And you mentioned that bullying even starts sometimes at ECD level. What are we saying about the family unit? Is this maybe a depiction of something that is happening at home, or where are these behaviors coming from? Um, socialization begins at birth. Mm -hmm. Certain tendencies uh, can be curbed through the right um, values mm -hmm. and uh, re reinforcing the desired values. Mm -hmm. So things like taking other people's property by force. We've had children taking other children's pocket money mm -hmm. or even taking their food. Their food away. If it is condoned at family level, it escalates into different settings and even results in adults who feel you can just take things by force. Because mm -hmm. bullying has taken that side, that aspect as well of taking other people's property. So I would say it, we have to look at bullying from multiple angles because it takes, <laughs> it's a 360 degree view. Let's look at what we watch on TV. Yes. The stories that are told in folklore. Mm -hmm. Let's look about at the culture that is being driven even in the music that people listen to. Mm -hmm. The kind of um, role models that our community looks up to and how they treat weaker people mm -hmm. or how they behave when other people are more vulnerable. There are different influences that perpetuate uh, bullying uh, behaviors. So I wouldn't like to say it's in the family. I would say it's all around us. Mm -hmm. Let's also look in the media in a lot of ways. Look at the cartoons mm -hmm. and other things that our children look at, uh, w watch. The games that they're playing. What uh, values are being pushed there? If they're pushing that might is right and if somebody is lower than you, mm -hmm. you can do what you like and they can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And even if they can report, y it can get worse. Then we have so much to do to ensure that we curb the values, the attitudes, the mindset that makes some people feel it is right to bully others. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier on, you mentioned bullying um, having become more of a culture in these schools. It's something that has been happening over time, such that now sometimes don't even uh, realize bullying or see it for what it is, because it's something that just happens probably every year. Let's take a scenario where we have pro Form 1s who come through. We hear a lot of stories of, of seniors bullying these young ones, but it's a culture. People talk about it, people laugh about it, and nothing is being done. So what are you doing as a ministry to make sure that this comes to an end because it, I'm sure it's it's these cases that start out small and just grow by the day until it gets out of hand. Uh, as a ministry, we are actually um, working towards um, ensuring that um, the recently aligned Education Act, the, our Education Act, which has recently been aligned to the Constitution of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. and recognizes the Bill of Rights for Children and also um, 
requires our sector to create safe school environments for all. Mm -hmm. At a practical level, we expect and require every school to have a clear policy on bullying. Mm -hmm. Every school must have a policy and clearly define it in age-appropriate language and using all the languages that are used in that community so that every pupil understand and every uh, pupil understands, every member of staff understand, and parents also understand. Mm -hmm. A school policy on bullying should define clearly which behaviors are referred to so that there is no doubt. Mm -hmm. So if a child is inclined that way, they will know, oh, what I do, this is what they call bullying. And the one who experiences will know, ha, huh, I have been bullied. And parents can then reinforce to their children, if this has happened, this is bullying. So after defining it, mm -hmm. the school must also spell out what each pupil must do if bullied, mm -hmm. who to report to, how to report, mm -hmm. what each member of staff who receives a report of bullying must do. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, is it something that is already in place? Is it in practice or is it something that you intend to do? It is actually in a place. Mm. What we're doing, uh, and we have gone through a process, is updating our implementation circulars and also strengthening our enforcement to ensure that those are on display at every school. Mm -hmm. And any pupil picked at random will tell you what is in the bullying policy of their school. So it is something that we have in place, but obviously from the, your opening remarks, compliance and enforcement is where we are focusing our energies on. Okay, all right. Um, earlier on when I asked you... Um, Sorry. Okay. On the school policy, we talked about defining it, mm -hmm. reporting, mm -hmm. and also what to do. This is peer to peer. So the one who's bullied is a child who mm -hmm. needs to be protected. The one who's bullying others is a child who needs help in order to transform to a child who behaves more appropriately in a way that makes them a pleasure to be with among others. And in that bullying policy, the role of parents should be clearly stated so that we work together because schools are really looking after children in local parentis. Mm -hmm. So basically, I wanted that policy clear. All right, thank you thank for you. clarifying that. Okay, so I was saying earlier on, I asked you um, whether it's possible for teachers to be included in the bullying circle, to which you answered, it's not really possible because of the power dynamics that are involved. This is where legal terms come in, um, terms such as assault and, and things like that. We want to look at the issue of living stone sooner. I'm sure you're aware of the case, um, a student from St. Matthias Stonzo who died under unclear circumstances, I'm sure the, the case is still before the courts. We also have a case um, that happened, I'm sure it was in Sekeshi Tungwiza, where a student was assaulted by a member of the community, rolled over in the mud, and a lot of things are just happening. Um, what is your stance as a ministry of, of primary and secondary education regarding issues like this, issues where we have children losing their lives in the hands of the school authorities in the hands of your ministry. What are you doing and what is it that you have to say about things like that happening? Um, the taking of a life is illegal. Schools, in terms of the Zimbabwe school health policy, mm -hmm. which our government launched in 2018, every school should conform to the standards of a safe school environment. 
in terms of uh, sanitary hygiene, in terms of the safety of the infrastructure, in terms of um, even risk mapping to prevent preventable mishaps in the school. Mm -hmm. Each school must have a, a psychosocially safe environment for effective teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Each school should have an, a functional child protection committee which links the, the teachers with members from among the pupils themselves speaking for their, representing the rest of the children, mm -hmm. with parents in that committee and with their representative from the uh, Department of Social Development where the social workers and social welfare functionaries are in the Ministry of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare, and community leadership. Each school should also have a functional guidance and a counseling support program where pupils feel safe to address adults on issues that concern them. So to now answer your question, on all the cases you've mentioned, mm -hmm. we see these as indicators of more and more work to be done. Mm more and more work to be done to empower pupils mm -hmm. to know their rights and how to enjoy them, where to seek help in time, mm -hmm. and the, the, the duty bearers to do their work in time. We also see this as an example of what our ministry has always pleaded with our communities on, to say, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Mm. But it also takes a whole village to protect that child so they grow up into a healthy, functional adult. We are happy with the work we're doing with Zimbabwe Public Police mm -hmm. because through the Victim Friendly Unit, we are working on more proactive initiatives for people to understand the law. Mm -hmm. Like I said, bullying is against the law. Exposing children to all vulnerabilities is against the Constitution of Zimbabwe and the Children's Act of Zimbabwe, let alone the Education Act. Mm -hmm. It's also against the, health, the school health policy itself. So as a ministry, we continue to work with other arms of government, with community leadership, with faith-based organizations, basically working with everyone who has a bearing on the safety and welfare of our children. It is deeply, deeply regrettable when we have cases where a member of the community feels they have a right to roll uh, pupils in the mud in the name of disciplining Discipline. them. It mm -hmm. is regrettable, it's illegal. It is deeply regrettable for any child to lose their lives in our care as an education system. Mm -hmm. But more regrettable is the fact that in many such cases, the perpetrators have not been brought to book. And when they have been, the same headlines mm. that shout that an injustice has been done, they turn to small print. If we could have more headlines of what happens when people have perpetrated such injustices, mm -hmm. it might also be a deterrent for those who think, oh, it happened somewhere else, nothing really happened. Mm -hmm. So it's a long story, and on behalf of our ministry, we appeal for those who feel they can help us mm -hmm. to get our schools to be even safer than they have been, to make sure those that have lost their lives, been injured or violated in ways that have been described before, mm -hmm. to help us to make these things come 
to the public eye because our major problem is in generalities we get a lot yeah but when we then say give us the specifics of what when how who and how we are struggling mm -hmm. okay um one issue that keeps coming one that one word that we keep using is safety the safety of children in the schools and your responsible for learner welfare psychological services as well as um, special needs education in the ministry looking at it uh, practically speaking i just want to know in brief i know you have things that you intend to do you have all these things on paper all these policies but how safe is the learning environment i am happy to say by and large mm -hmm. the learning environment is safe okay we can t attest to that remember in 2020 when we um, had to conform to the national uh, prerogative on the containment of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and schools were closed from the 27th of March 2020, 2020 mm -hmm. only to reopen on the 14th of September, the 28th of September mm -hmm. for examination classes, mm -hmm. followed by the 26th of October for school for classes that would write the exams in 2021 okay and the rest of the classes in November okay why we tell you that schools are safe is how pupils were dying to go back to school <laughs> how they were asking everywhere when will schools open mm -hmm. that's an indicator that by and large the environment is safe, is safe mm -hmm. but it does not condone those unsafe spaces uh, or unsafe incidences that have happened in our schools. So there is still work to be done until we can say 100%. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, as we, as we wrap up, as we come to an end, um, there's one issue that I've just thought of, the issue of corporal punishment. What does the law say in terms of corporal punishment? Are teachers allowed to discipline children by ways of beating them? Or, or whatever, what is your stance as a ministry and what is our stance as a nation generally when it comes to corporal punishment? Because sometimes you find children come home injured. What happened in Darowa? What was Nani, Darowa and teacher? So what is really happening? Um, I would like to begin by defining corporal punishment as it was before the Education Amendment Act of 2020. Before the um, Education Amendment Act of 2020, corporal punishment was provided for. Under policy circular number P35 of 1999, mm -hmm. corporal punishment was uh, provided for as a very last resort for serious acts of indiscipline it was defined as the administration of corporal punishment by the head of a school mm -hmm. in a defined manner mm -hmm. when a pupil has undergone an, a hearing mm -hmm. and the outcome of that misconduct hearing would be that they be issued with corporal punishment as defined. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. would mean the head of a school in the presence of at least one witness mm -hmm. would administer a number of, do you call it canings? Yes, a number yes. of canings. Mm -hmm. And that would be entered onto a log book. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you're saying they're just uh, it, it's a laid down procedure. procedure. That is you what don't just discipline a child by means of corporal punishment, but the, the uh, things that you need to follow were there. Uh -huh. So that was abused where everybody was wantonly assaulting children. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when it started being called corporal, corporal punishment because that was assault and still is. And in terms of the Education Act, 
it is illegal, it is forbidden, there are no exceptions. Thank you very much for clar clarifying that. It's a very unfortunate that we've run out of time. Um, we were discussing today the issue of the safety of the learning environment, especially in light of um, the recent alleged suicide of a student from St. Faith who allegedly committed suicide due to cases of bullying. So we had the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education here with us today in the, uh, in the studio um, telling us what they're doing as a ministry, what they've put in place, and what they intend to do to make sure that learners are safe within the learning environment. Until we meet again, hopefully next week, pleasant viewing.